When you think of AMD, your brain more than likely goes straight to Sapphire. After all, they are arguably the go-to brand when it comes to AMD partners. And over the years, they've been synonymous with creating some of the best graphics cards released on behalf of the red team, with their Nitro Plus range being at the forefront. Now you may remember when the RX 7000 series launched that I absolutely fell in love with the Nitro version, and was even as bold to say that if Apple were to make a consumer grade GPU, this is how it would kind of look. And whether you like it or hate Apple, that's a pretty big compliment. So now with the RX 9000 series here, how have Sapphire taken that GPU and given it the, well, all important Nitro treatment? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Who's this? It's Tony. Rigatoni, Tony? Oh yeah, what happened? Well, he's dead. Yeah, but how? Burned alive, something to do with his house or something. Fire, CPU cooler, I don't know. Really? Yeah. That seems unlikely. Well, I always said that I, I'd never let this happen again. Not after what happened to Mascarpone Leone. I don't think that's what... It... No, if only he knew about the Freezer 36 ARGB CPU coolers from Arctic, featuring amazing cooling potential for the latest and greatest CPUs without breaking the bank. It's the perfect way to keep your CPU cool and your PC looking stylish, whilst also giving you customization options thanks to the RGB lighting on the two included fans. Such a shame, he was so young. It wouldn't have even mattered what theme his PC was since the Freezer 36 comes in both white and black to suit whatever look you're going for in your system. Where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. Now, let's get back to work. Hey Joey, get us a cup of coffee. So, the RX 9070 XT, a GPU that has finally put AMD back on the map as a worthy contender at the $599 price point. Now, we'll say from the get-go that, well, this is not an MSRP-based card, and you will be expected to pay a premium for it. But that's fine. I'm all about getting a deal on a GPU, but I'm under no illusion that AIBs are under more stress than ever to make money. And while they have to offer up MSRP-based solutions like Sapphire do with their Pulse range, they also want to showcase what they're able to do and not just offer the same product as everyone else, which is where the 9070 XT Nitro Plus comes in. As I mentioned, I'm a big fan of the Nitro Ranger cards, and I honestly couldn't see how Sapphire were going to improve on their existing design but they have. What we got here is arguably one of the nicest looking AMD cards of this generation. It's also on the large side, though for anyone who's ever had a Nitro card before, that won't come as a complete shock as they're typically on the larger side of the scale. Measuring in at 331 millimeters in length, 128 millimeters in height, and 66 millimeters thick, it makes it a three slot card that's also well, very square in its dimensions, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. It comprises of a single color scheme of gunmetal gray, though it does use mixed materials with the front of the card having this kind of perforated design, though there is a black backing behind them. So this is more style over function. And this shroud houses the three large fans of which the middle one spins in an opposite direction to the other two for improved cooling. The top of the card is probably, I guess the most interesting part as it kind of has a unique grill design that features a crisscross lattice style pattern that I don't think I've actually ever really seen before, but it works and definitely makes it stand out from other cards on the market by doing something a little bit different, while also giving a glimpse of the large heatsink beneath and potentially letting hot air escape, though we'll find out what that does in practice very shortly. Another really unique part is the back plate, or back plates, should I say. The RX 9070 XT Nitro Plus incorporates a full metal backplate which spans across the PCB and with the included thermal pads it does help to dissipate heat. But what makes this special though is that another backplate comes included which, well, attaches using magnets which then extends beyond the PCB and over the large cutout section. Within this cutout section is an ARGB out connector and the single power connector because unlike other AMD cards, the Nitro Plus features a 12 volt 2x6 connector, which is an odd move, but I also need to, I guess, expand on it a little bit. In a time where Nvidia have been getting, let's say some bad press about using the connector, Sapphire have made the bold move to incorporate it into their card, but they've not just put the connector on and called it a day. Instead, they've made some key changes to make sure that there's little to no room for error or issues. Firstly, they include an adapter in the box, but 
much like we've seen on power supplies from the likes of MSI, for instance, there's a coloured tip, meaning that when you plug it in, if you still see blue, well, then it's not plugged in far enough. On top of this, they've also added fuse protection into the circuitry behind the connector, again, giving just yet another point of failure before, well, anything catastrophic could happen. On the back of the heatsink is a small amount of foam too, which just kind of protects the cable or the adapter from being torn up by the fins of the heatsink. And then when you put the second backplate into place, things are hidden nicely kind of out of sight, adding to the clean look of the card, while also adding a unique talking point and well, a bold move by using this connector. And well, when you've got it on there, it just comes out here. You can't see anything in terms of the cable. And this works really, really well. It's a, let's say a nice implementation of, of doing it. And something, I don't know, we haven't really seen from Nvidia. We have seen in O3D do it on some of their stealth cards, but again, in a slightly different way. But I guess this is more interesting because, well, it's AMD. The uniqueness doesn't just stop there though, as this card is heavily engineered with the consumer in mind, because while buying a graphics card is one thing, it seems like Sapphire wanna make sure you have the ability to combat one of the biggest issues that long-term gaming usage actually inflicts, dust. Dust is the prime killer for any PC component, and cleaning your graphics card is typically a tricky affair. But with Quick Connect features for the fans, Sapphire have actually added in the ability to remove the fans with a single screw meaning that if one should ever fail or if you need to remove them for cleaning, then it's really simple and should help with any kind of major warranty issues as well. Again, this isn't new technology. We've seen it before with KFA2 or Galax, if you're in a different region, and even XFX, where they kind of take it one step further, having the magnetic um, removal of the fans instead. Now, I think they've had to make this an easy solution because the cooling on the card is actually very extensive. From the PTM7950 TIM that they use on the GPU core to the aero curve fans, all the way through to the steel frame and integrated cooling module that makes direct contact with the GPU core, memory, and power delivery components. There's a lot of material used to give the Nitro card the strongest footing to be regarded, I guess, as one of the best AMD cards of this generation. And with the Nitro Plus range of old, they do demand a higher price point. But with every element that I've mentioned, I think it's clear to see why this comes in at a higher price point. You're not just paying for some fancy RGB, of which the Nitro Plus does include an RGB light bar under that shroud, that's of course fully customizable, or a better quality graphics card support bracket, of which also comes included, or a faster clock speed, of which again, it does come with. Instead, you seem to be getting the full package while still retaining that, let's call it value for money argument. Now, speaking of what else the card has to offer, clock speed is an important one because this card comes in with a game clock or core clock of 2,520 megahertz, a boost clock of 3,060 megahertz and a memory speed of 2,518 megahertz. So a 5% boost over a reference spec 9070 XT on the game clock and a lower 3% extra on the boost which if this was an Nvidia card, I'd probably argue that it's just not good enough. But AMD works a bit different with the clock speeds and can have more meaningful impact compared to what we see comparatively speaking with Nvidia. Instead of relying on aggressive GPU boost behavior like Nvidia, which dynamically adjusts clock speeds well beyond the advertised spec, depending on power and thermal headroom, AMD's boost clocks are more closely tied to what you'll actually see in real world scenarios. This means that while a 3% increase over reference might seem small on paper, it's more likely to translate into an actual uplift in sustained performance, rather than being absorbed by pre-existing boost headroom. So in this case, while the overclock isn't huge, it should still offer a tangible improvement over a stock 9070 XT. So sticking with overclocks, we obviously wanted to see how far we could push things ourselves. And with AMD, it does work slightly differently in terms of increasing both the core clock and the memory clock to stable levels until you see performance drop, and then lowering the voltage of the card to find a point of instability, and then just clawing it back a little bit to keep stability at the forefront. Now to check this, we ran an hour long loop of F124 to simulate what a typical gaming session would be like after prolonged usage. The overclocked GPU temperature maintained a steady 59 degrees C with its memory temperature also stable, but significantly higher at 90 degrees. The stock GPU temperature fluctuated more with temperatures ranging from 53 degrees to nearly 58 degrees, almost matching the overclocked figure. However, its memory temperature remained far lower, staying between 80 to 84 degrees. 
Now, the most striking thing that I noticed was the fan speed between the two runs, with stock giving us some of the best noise levels that we've had, with the fans running at sub 1000 RPM. Well, Overclock showed that Sapphire have clearly pushed this card as hard as they can out of the factory without any detriment, as our Overclock actually pushed the fan speeds in excess of 1700 RPM. Power-wise, we also saw some changes with the stock clocks pulling around 315 watts of power, while the overclock saw that rise just beyond 360 watts. So what I'm trying to say is I guess there's some trade-offs with fan speed and power for, well, potentially a little bit of extra performance. Now, in terms of performance, the Sapphire actually did line up perfectly and outperformed the Gigabyte Gaming OC in all, well, pretty much all of the games that we tested and brought us performance similar to the levels of the 7900 XTX and RTX 4080. While ray tracing gave us levels of performance that puts it anywhere between the RTX 3080 and 4080, depending on the title. Overclocking did push performance closer to that of the RTX 5080, which in some titles did actually see similar levels of performance to the 7900 XTX, which doesn't give us a great uplift generation to generation, though when factoring in the cheaper launch price, that definitely helps to soften the blow, if you can get it for that price, of course. Now, while the factory overclock on the Sapphire card has helped to bring performance up, the manual tweaking that we did made a bigger difference when comparing to other cards, not just from AMD, but Nvidia too. So wrapping things up with the Sapphire RX 9070 XT Nitro Plus, it's honestly hard not to be impressed. This card feels like a proper flagship, not just in terms of raw performance, but in how much care and engineering has actually gone into the whole package. And that includes the levels of innovation too. It's not just a step up from reference models, though one doesn't exist in terms of an AMD NBA card, instead it's a complete rework that adds tangible value. You've got a sleek industrial design, smart quality of life touches like the magnetic backplate and quick swap fans, and also a cooler that looks and performs like it was built to last. Now performance wise, it does everything you'd expect. At stock, it comfortably pulls ahead of the Gigabyte Gaming OC in just about every title that we tested. And once overclocked, it flirts with performance levels closer to the 7900 XTX and even the RTX 5080 in certain games. That's not a massive generational uplift if you're coming from say a 7900 XT or so, sure, but it's a solid leap if you're on a 6000 series or older. And the added features here just help round out the value story quite nicely. Cooling performance, as you'd expect from a Nitro Plus card, was solid across the board. Even during extended use and overclocking, the card maintained stable temps and did so without kicking up a fuss in terms of noise. Though I'd probably say that running this card at stock, if noise is an issue, could be the better choice given the raised fan speed and power delivery. Now, it's clear that Sapphire have really dialed things in when it comes to cooling, not just slapping on a big cooler for the sake of it, but actually tuning the fan profiles to strike a balance between acoustics and airflow. At stock, it runs incredibly quiet, easily one of the quieter cards that we've had on the bench. And even when pushed with an overclock, it never got overly loud or thermally unstable, though still made, I guess, a tangible difference. Power draw does increase under load, as you'd expect, but it stays well within reason for a card, at least in this class. Now, that all to one side, let's talk about price, because well, this is just where things get tricky. While I've been happy to pay a bit more for a Nitro Plus card in the past, I think there's a limit, and we're rapidly approaching it. Right now, this card is listed at $859.99 US dollars. That's well, a $260 premium over the $599 MSRP for the base 9070 XT. And while I get it, Sapphire has gone all in here with high-end materials, refined cooling, and user-focused design. I can't ignore the fact that $260 is a big stretch. Though I don't think that's through actually any fault of Sapphire, and they have intended for it to be cheaper. And instead, we're dealing with the same old issue of supply and demand. Personally, I think $150 over MSRP is probably the sweet spot for this kind of card. That would still put it above the pulse or other more basic options, but it feels a lot more justifiable given the build quality, the extra cooling headroom, and all of the kind of thoughtful details that Sapphire has actually baked in. At $860 though, it starts to feel less like a premium upgrade and more like a pricing wall that's just hard to justify especially with AMD's own positioning of the 9070 XT as a more budget conscious alternative to the top tier options, especially as at that price point, it opens you up to other models from Nvidia who aren't exactly offering the best value for money right now. So that kind of says a lot. 
So while this is easily one of the best custom RX 9070 XTs on the market, and well, it really is, it's hard to recommend outright at that current price. If, and it's a big if, if you can find it for closer to $750 or even $700, it's a strong pick. You're getting a full featured ultra refined card that doesn't just look good, but performs exceptionally well too. But at $860, even as a Nitro Plus fan myself, that's a tough sell. Still, if pricing settles, and well, it usually does, even if it takes a while, then this is, I guess, absolutely a GPU to keep on your radar. It's one of the most polished, complete packages in the RX 9000 lineup, and a perfect showcase of why Sapphire continues to be one of AMD's most respected board partners. And so far, this is definitely my favorite RX 9070 XT that we've had come through here. Yeah. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want some cool, super special perks along with supporting the channel with everything that we do, then you can join the Patreon family. The link is down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.